When you hear about chemical weapons, you usually think about World War I, World War II, mustard gas, Saddam Hussein, stuff like that. You never expect an insect to use chemical weapons. Well, in this video, we want to talk about the bombardier beetle, a type of insect that uses a chemical to protect itself. You can find beetles or cockroaches, we like to call them, all over the planet, except Antarctica. This is the same for bombardier beetle. There are different types of them all over the planet except Antarctica. Even though they're completely different in each continent, the idea is the same. They use chemical weapons to protect themselves. But the funny thing is, there is a difference on how they use this weapon. Like for example, the bombardier beetles that live in South Africa are called the Ookpister beetle. This insect loves to eat ants, and eating ants for a beetle is no joke because there's always a threat of the ants surrounding them, and pretty much they are what's for dinner. So when this type of beetle gets hungry and wants to go eat some ants, it has to be extremely careful. It can't really just enter a colony and start eating ants away. It has to strategically get close to the colony, but not too close, and basically pinpoint single ants that are not in a group, eat them, and immediately run away. You can't get too greedy when you're eating ants. The reason for that is if you get close to the colony, the ants will get extremely angry and surround you and basically fight to the death. And when a good amount of ants attack a type of insect like this, there is zero chance of survival. The Ookpister beetle also have these cool legs that basically deflects ants from getting up in its body, which is very important. So the ants have a very hard time reaching the beetle's body to start damaging and eating it. But what about the bombardier beetle? I thought they have chemical weapons to protect themselves. They don't use this weapon on ants. They use it on predators that wants to eat them. The main predator that hunts these types of beetles are mongooses. Mongoose are extremely fearless and they attack pretty much anything. And these Ookpister beetles are one of them. These mongooses even attack dangerous snakes and eat them. So they don't mess around. But the funny part is that against these beetles, it can't do much. Because the bombardier beetle knows this animal. And when it gets chased by it, it immediately shoots out the chemical weapons. And it's shot out in a certain way where it directly hits the mongoose in the face. So basically, it attacks the eyes, nose, and mouth. The chemical that's shot out is a type of acid. And the acid is not that dangerous. But the way the mongoose feels after getting shot with it in its eyes, mouth, and nose, it feels like it has been poisoned. Which is why the mongoose leaves the beetle alone and feels like it's dying. Another interesting fact about South Africa is that there are lizards that imitate the Ookpister beetle so they don't get attacked by these mongooses. This beetle you're seeing right here has changed its color and the way it moves to imitate the Ookpister beetle just because different types of predators including the mongoose leaves this type of creature alone. The Ookpister beetle is the South African version of the bombardier beetle. And just like we said, you can find these guys everywhere, but they look different. And the way they use their weapon is different. A more interesting type of bombardier beetle is the American version. The most interesting part about this type of beetle is that it could shoot in all directions. It could shoot from the back, rear, side, front, everything. You could kind of compare it to the tank cannon, where it can turn to all directions. Another cool part about the American version is that the type of acid it shoots out is boiling hot. It's damn near 100 degrees Celsius type of acid being shot out. So not only is it acidic, but it's boiling. But it's not like the American bombardier beetle is holding boiling water in its guts. No sir. You could say this beetle is a type of chemist because it knows what type of chemicals to mix with one another to shoot out boiling liquid. But it's not like the beetle's brain is choosing to do this. That's just how it evolved and it automatically does this when it's threatened. If you want to look at it in terms of chemistry, how this boiling acid is created, you have to know that inside its body, there's two glands, which one of them holds hydrogen peroxide and the other gland holds hydroquinone. Whenever it's needed, the beetle mixes these two chemicals with one another and it creates boiling acid and shoots it out. So in simple terms, it never holds the boiling acid inside its body because if it were to hold this type of liquid, it would die from the inside because having a 100 degrees Celsius liquid inside your body is no joke. 
The coolest part about the American Bombardier Beetle is that when it shoots out this liquid, it is the hot temperature that kills other insects, not the acid, because it's kind of like pouring hot boiling water on your body. If you've seen the beginning of Breaking Bad, you know that two meth dealers have caught Walter White and are telling him to teach them how to do his method of cooking. And since he was a professional chemist, he mixed different types of chemicals with one another to create a toxic explosion, basically saving his life. Just like the bombardier beetle in America, where chemistry saves its life every day. So the way it seems, this beetle doesn't have any real enemies. Whenever it's threatened, it just shoots out this hot chemical and survives the day no problem. But it's not that easy. It has predators that threatens its life every single day. One of them are these guys, toads. And of course, other types of frogs, especially the black spotted frog. Small frogs cannot attack this beetle, but toads and big frogs have no problem attacking it. And they've evolved in a way where the chemical that's shot out from these beetles don't affect them as much. Toads and frogs do an extremely important thing in the ecosystem. They do a very important thing of keeping the population of all types of insects, including these bombardier beetles in control, so their population doesn't boom and destroy the environment. This is why scientists say when one type of species goes extinct, it's not like you only lost that type of species. You basically damage the entire ecosystem because a very important role is gone and there's going to be an imbalance. So where do these bombardier beetles live? You can find them in all types of weather, except very dry climates. Especially when they have to lay eggs, it can't be a dry place, which is why you rarely find them in dry places.